perhaps you're not confident because your kicking has been a little bit off lately. Uh, maybe if you're a key position player, perhaps your marking um, hasn't been, you haven't got that one touch grab um, in your game. You've been double grabbing it or missing those marks. And generally what tends to happen is you'll lose your, your confidence in your voice and your conviction in calling for the ball. But also, uh, so that's from you personally, but also what can happen is you'll lose trust um, from your teammates um, and that can have a bit of a ripple effect in your confidence as well. So um, if you reflect on your game and you want to make a bigger impact at the game or you want to work on your consistency, then ask yourself what's stopping you um, and then from there work on on those areas that you feel that were, are going to ultimately boost your confidence and allow you to then really command for the for the ball next time you're playing uh, and build that trust back up with your teammates. We've got these four key areas that typically are our foundations from an Australian rules football point of view, and they are strength training. So let's say you talk, your um, ability to win the contest is down. There's no doubt in my mind if you'll get stronger through box squat, trap bar, deadlift, bench press, and weighted chin-ups or bench pulls. Um, so your, your key areas of, of leg strength, upper body strength, and, and developing some good core trunk strength as well to be able to handle those heavy external loads. Um, you'll be much better than keeping your feet in the contest. You'll be much better at breaking a tackle, uh, sticking your tackles. The, the more force you can produce, um, the better you'll be in those contested situations to counteract that um, jostling and, and combativeness that you find yourself in the contest. So strength training will definitely help. I've gone into great detail on episode 116, which we released on our podcast, benchmarking yourself so you can see where you stack up against an Australian rules footballer. Next is our endurance. So I talked about on episode uh, 114 and 113, the importance of aerobic and anaerobic development. So make sure to check out 113 and 114 on our podcast um, to get a better understanding of um, specifically workout examples to improve your aerobic capacity and workout examples about how to improve your anaerobic um, threshold uh, and whether you're in season, pre season, or off season, how, how we want to periodize those. Uh, which is critical because you can, if you just start piling on a lot of fitness training this time of year, um, you're going to get a lot of fatigue um, thrown at your system and that's going to actually have a negative uh, impact in how you feel going into games and, and your output in games. So we want to get that balance right between um, maintaining or perhaps developing your fitness um, while also getting in uh, adequate recovery between games week after week. Then we've got our agility, uh, so our game speed. Episode uh, 55, how to improve your lateral speed, will be um, really important for those listening in that feel that your agility is off. Maybe you're, one, you're lacking that ability to cut away from opponent um, or perhaps you're... Um, yeah, yeah, you just haven't got that speed to be able to evade your opponents and you're wanting to build that back out. Uh, it is a trained quality, both the reactive piece, so being able to read the cues, whether you're doing defensive action, like being able to read, read the opponent's hips uh, and lay your tackle, or if, um, if you're playing a small-sided game and you're trying to evade tackles and not get touched. So we want to make sure we're working on our quick feet, working on our power cutting, drop steps, uh, and and um, sharp angles like a 180 shuttle turn, for example, um, to really practice that penultimate step, decelerating off one leg and then crossover in, and cutting and, and developing that, that power. For those that perhaps uh, if you're doing completing that audit and you just feel like your energy's down, your motivation's down, um, you've been putting in a lot of work and you're still not reaping the benefits, perhaps you're just not doing enough recovery. You're doing a lot of working out and you're not doing a lot of working in. Um, and I like to think of a two to one ratio um, where if you're doing a training session and it's quite intense and you've, that went for 60 minutes, then you've now got at least two hours that you owe to yourself of recovery to work in to be able to reap the benefits of that training and, and ultimately get an adaptation um, and, and allow your body to be able to get that balance right between fitness and fatigue. Okay, so are you fatigued because you're overworking or are you fatigued because you're simply under recovery? And I, I'd say for more often than not, it'll be the later. So get in your recovery, book in extra massages, make sure you get down to your local pool, go through some pool mobility and run-throughs and drills 